Uh, so my plan for today, I'll be continuing what we have discussed so far. We were discussing basic machine learning algorithms and also uh, some of the parameters. And also I will show you like uh, some implementation of this, but uh, we will discuss in a separate session uh, on implementation details. Right. Now, what we have discussed so far, uh, we discuss uh, two basic algorithms, one R and decision trees. Uh, one R, I told you, like it's a very simple algorithm which creates a single level decision tree. And main assumptions behind this is uh, usually for the decision one attribute is enough. The second one is a decision tree where we actually get the, the description as a kind of a tree structure. So today I'm planning to uh, discuss three more basic algorithms. These five algorithms are, I mean, coming from five di different paradigms, which gives you an idea like what are the classical machine learning algorithms are. So the first one we are going to discuss today is a prism algorithm, which generates a rule set. And then fourth one is on nearest neighbor algorithm, which actually uh, will not create any machine learning model as such. But the model is uh, instance themselves. I will explain that. And the final one is on naive base. So naive base is actually probability based uh, algorithm. We are going to talk about that as the, the last algorithm for today. Right, now let's start. So if I just quickly discuss what we have discussed so far uh, with one R algorithm, you for each attribute you count how many times a particular attribute value appeared and for these attribute values you assign most frequent class and then based on that you calculate total error for each of these attributes and the decision of this is uh, attribute with the least error right so in this particular case for uh, weather data set, we have two possible attributes. You can select either outlook or humidity, and the algorithm will select one of them as the output. Right. And then we discuss about the uh, how we can, you know, handle numerical attributes. So in numerical attributes, we discuss that uh, you sort it according to their numerical value together with their classes. And then whenever the class changes, we put up a breakpoint. But when you put up breakpoint for each of the changes, then you have too many split points. To minimize that, we will uh, define something called a minimum value of majority class. So when you say minimum is three, what it means, at least in the range, you will have to have minimum of three instances from majority class. So you can see here. So in this particular range, we have four years instances, right? Compared to one no instances. So here also we have three years instances and two no instances. So likewise, you define the ranges. Finally, if you have like common ranges, you merge them. So the final results for temperature attribute for our example is so the middle point between uh, 75 and 80 degrees, that is 77.5, right? And we knew you 77.5. So error, we can calculate like in previous case, assigning most frequent class. Similarly, we will do this. And in this one, we will take humidity as the final answer, final model, right? The next thing that we have discussed is uh, generating decision trees. Uh, there are many techniques you will see of generation of decision trees. The first one will be like how to find a root node, right? So in our toy example, we have four possible attributes and one of them could be the root node. And there are many ways that you can actually, you know, develop trees. The method that we have discussed is we look at an attribute which can purely separate the instances. In this particular case, we will select the overcast because you can see here this branch, 
purely separate the instances. So the next one is once you select the root node, then what will be the branches, the other nodes? In that particular case, we put all the possible other attributes. And again, we look for pure separation. In this particular case, humidity will be the best one. So similarly, if you try the other branches and this will be the final decision tree. But remember that uh, you will not be able to get the perfect tree like this because this is a toy problem, but we can specify at least minimum number of instances in these leaves, right? So those are the kind of a parameters later on we are going to optimize. So we will discuss these parameter optimizations later on. But uh, in a decision tree like this, we can think about like depth of the tree as well as the number of instances in the leaves could be uh, the sum of the parameters you can, you know, optimize. Right. And then we actually look at the mathematical basis for this. Again, selection of uh, uh, root node can be done in various ways. One example is uh, calculating information gain value and which uh, basis for, uh, you know, information in a attribute. So you look at the information uh, before the split and you subtract with the information ask, uh, after split. And this is known as the gain. So I also discussed the equation, but I didn't go through the uh, calculations. I do not think it is necessary at your level knowing all this, but those who are interested, you can actually go through the calculations. So once you do that, you can find out, for example, information gain for outlook before the splitting, you calculate the information and after splitting, you calculate the information. And uh, when you take the log in base of two, you will get the outcome in bits. So similarly, you can do this for other attributes and you can see that the outlook has the highest number of bits. The gain is highest in outlook, which indicates that this is the purest node. So in that sense, you can put in the outlook. And similarly, you have to, uh, you know, repeat the process. Uh, once you have that, the attributes, you have to calculate the information gain again. And by doing so, you can build the tree. Right. Now, like in information gain, there are other alternative measures you can select, which are the parameters of a decision tree. So gain ratio is one such measurement, which uh, considers the number of branches in a uh, uh, attribute. Right. If you have a highly branching attribute like an ID number, the gain, information gain will be high. So the third algorithm that I'm going to discuss under this basic uh, machine learning algorithms is a uh, decision rules, which is again a, another white box type of algorithm where you can clearly see how the decisions are made. But when we talk about this generating rules, there are many ways you can do that. For example, one technique is you build the decision tree and decision tree you can convert into a rule set. So that is one idea. And actually there are some algorithms built on top of this idea as well. So what those algorithms, uh, they first build the decision tree, then the decision tree is converted to a rule set, right? So if you ask me like how this is possible for each path, from root to leaf can be a root, right? So if I go back, so let me go to our decision tree algorithm. So that means in this particular case, so we had the decision tree, right, this one. So in this particular case, if you take that one, so the conversion is, right, from starting from root, to leaf node, for each leaf, we can create a rule, right? So for example, the rule for this is, so we can take, for example, uh, going from this root to leaf is a rule something like this. We can say if outlook is sunny and humidity equals high, then we say play is no. Right. So likewise, 
we can create a rule set, right? So you build the decision tree and then for each leaves, you will have a decision rule like this. So this is one way of generating rules. So I have a quick question like, how many rules we can create using this decision tree? Yes, any ideas? How many decision rules we can have? Yes, as Professor Susan said, there will be a five rules we can create, right? For each of these, now you should be able to come up with the equivalent decision rule, right? Okay, good. Now, having said that, now let's go back. So this is one way to do creating a, a rule set and there are some machine algorithms uh, uses this very same idea, right? Okay. So the next, let's look at independently, we can generate decision rules. And this is exactly what I'm going to discuss for today, right? So uh, to do this, what we are going to use is called covering algorithm, right? So if you want to generate decision rules directly from a data set, we can use this idea of covering algorithm. The strategy means, uh, you will first start with some uh, uh, class and for each class, you are going to uh, add uh, uh, selections and then you are trying to refine it, right? So each rule, it will cover some of the instances and based on that idea, you are going to create a rule set, right? So the idea is you take each class at a time. So in our weather data set, we have two classes, yes class and no class. So you take, let's say first yes class, you create a rule for yes class, then you go for no class, okay? So that's how it works. So let me show you this with an example. Now let's say we have a two attributes, two numerical attributes. So this X and Y are two numerical attributes. The idea that I'm going to discuss is, let's say if the, the two uh, attributes are numerical, you know that we can represent each of these data points as a point in 2D plane, isn't it? So you can see some X value and some Y value. So these A and B are the class labels. So you start creating decision rules saying that the decision rules are always in the form of if and then else, right? The decision rule always start with if, and then you will have some class value, right? So initially you can assign all the instances to one particular class. So since we have A and B, let's say we are going to assign everything to A. So what we are going to say is if it is true, then class is A, the meaning that everything will be classified as A. Of course, definitely there are some errors. And the next step is you are trying to identify a test which improves the accuracy. So when you go along this, you can see, we can separate out A from B, right? So for example, if we you take this one, if I draw a line starting from somewhere here, you can see that we can, the, in this line, we can separate out A from B. Of course, there are some Bs here, but now the accuracy is uh, much better compared to the previous. So for example, in this particular case, the accuracy is, can you count how many A's are here? So we have A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have six instances out of how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So the accuracy of this rule is 6 divided by 20, right? Okay, now 
when you are going to go along this line, if you select this one, now what is the accuracy? Right? Now you can see the accuracy is, right, in this particular case, we will have, right, I'm going to erase this one. So the accuracy of this is 6 divided by 20. Now, when you say something like this, let's say this point is 1.2. If x value is greater than 1.2, now we are going to say A. So this is our, uh, you know, new classification. Now, how many instances we have? Still, we have six. We have still six out of how many? We have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right? So you will see that accuracy is improved. So starting, we have uh, some accuracy by putting some test here we improve the accuracy of the rule. So we can do, continue to do the same. So the next time when you go to the next operation, so you now go along this direction and you can find a place where in this, you can separate A and B. So now we have put another condition saying that when X is greater than 1.2, that means this side. And then when you say Y is greater than 2.6, so which indicates this area. Right now, what is the accuracy of this? You can see in this one we have five instances, and total is also five. Perfect accuracy. So now, what we can do is we can actually remove all these instances from this, and then you can repeat the process. And that is how exactly it is working. Right. Now that we have got some idea, right? So let's think about uh, to start with some example and try to understand the process. And you don't have to do this manually. Uh, so usually what will happen when you load the data set and when you select the algorithm, it automatically does for us. But I think we should understand how it works. Now to uh, you know uh, talk about this, so I'm going to use a simple example, right? The example actually coming out from a data set called, uh, you know, uh, 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 sunglasses. I mean, glass uh, glasses recommendation from a data set, right? So depend on uh, the condition, we are going to suggest some, uh, you know, glasses. So let me share the data set first. And then like we did earlier, we will go through again from the data set and try to understand how it works. So let me share you the data set. Give me a second to share you the data set, right? And then I will go through the steps one at a time. So I'm going to share you the data set in uh,
Sorry about the delay. I couldn't find the copy of the data set. Right, I found it. Sorry about the delay. So I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, put the data set in the WhatsApp so you can, uh, you know, get it from there. So this data set is known as a contact lens data set. Like in weather data, this data set is a contact uh, data set. And the idea here is you are going to uh, uh, recommend a type of lenses based on some input features like age, spectacle prescription, astigmatism, and clear production rate. Yes. Uh, can you confirm whether you have received the data set? Okay, right, great. Now let's start. Now you can work on this problem. So I have shared the data set. Now I can explain. Right, now here is the steps. Now, like I told you earlier, we start assigning everything to one particular class, right? So when I say instances, so all the uh, instances, we put it to one single class. So that means that we can represent uh, in graphically like this large circle and then based on the test we will keep on adding some test which improves the original accuracy of the uh, decision rule and finally when we had get the perfect uh, accuracy we are going to stop at that so that is exactly what we are going to do okay so now let's move on so when i say accuracy we define accuracy like this so we will get the total uh, number of instances and then some positive examples. Uh, in this particular case, positive examples are the class that we are going to select, right? So the finishing point is when this accuracy is maximum, that means 100% we can stop. Right, now here is how we are going to start. So we will have if, right, uh, sorry, I again disconnected. So let me. I'm again. Okay. Anyways. Okay. So here is how we are going to calculate these accuracies. So get the data set first. So I'm going to select the data set. So here is my data set, uh, where is it, this one, right. So here is my data set. So now I'm going to go through this uh, data set. I'm focusing on hard, right? So if I look at the recommendation hard. So now when I say recommendation hard, what are the possible tests we I can have? 
So the possible tests are for each attribute, we have different values. For each attribute value, we can come up with the accuracy rule. Now, for example, the first one is called age young. So when age is young, what is the recommendation for heart, right? So that's what we need to look for. So let me look at that, right? When age is young, so I can select age is young. How many times we have a recommendation is hard? Age is young. How many times we can recommendation is hard? Right? So we have young here. Okay, this is hard. We have one instance. Again, young. Again, young. Again, young. Right? How many instances we can have hard? So you can see recommendation hard. We have two instances out of eight instances. So we can put up the accuracy as when age is young, accuracy is two divided by eight. So which it means we have total eight instances which age is young. Out of eight, two is recommendation is hard. Okay. Now what we are going to do is for each attribute value combination, we calculate this accuracy and we find where the accuracy is maximum. Okay. So that's what we are going to do. So we'll do only one. So can you tell me what is the accuracy for the second one? When age is pre-biopic, pre-press biopic, right? So what is the accuracy? Just going through how many times this age pre-press biopic is appeared and out of that how many times it will recommendation is hard? That's what we need to get, you know, find out. So total is eight out of eight. How many? We have only one, right? Right. So you can calculate and here is the answer. You can actually do it at home if you want. So out of eight instances, there will be a one recommended hard. So now, Go through the accuracies and can you tell me which attribute value is the best for this problem? Or which test gives you the highest accuracy? Which one gives you the highest accuracy? Yes, anyone? Exactly, yes. There are two uh, attribute values which gives you the highest accuracy. First one is astigmatism, yes. And the second one is tear production rate is normal. Both can be possible candidates. So when you have like a situation like this, usually we... So let me uh, start from the beginning. So I we, we discussed the idea of covering algorithm. We started with empty left-hand side with selecting one particular class value. And then for this empty place, we are trying to put some possible test, attribute value tests. And what this set means when age is young, that means if you put age is young here, how many times you will get the recommendation as hard according to the data set I have shared with you. So the first one says out of eight instances where age is young, Two instances, you have a recommendation hard. So this value indicate the classification accuracy. So you did this for all the possible attribute value tests. And you select the best ones to proceed. So currently, we have two possibilities. Stigmatism, yes, and the tear production rate normal. So both has the same accuracy. 
So when you have a situation like this, one solution would be you randomly. So I don't know what is going on. Right. So let me uh, start the sharing. I actually. Uh, Right. According to the previous discussion, now we know we have uh, two possible selections. So you select one of them as randomly. So let's say we select astigmatism, yes. So when I say astigmatism, yes, now we have a modified rule. We already select one of the attribute values, right? Now our modified rule is astigmatism, yes, their recommendation. But we know the accuracy is very less, about like 33%. Now let's try, right? Now the data set will be uh, reduced because now you don't have to look at uh, all the data points. You have to look at data points where stigmatism yes. So this is what you will get, right? So altogether, you will have only 12 uh you know uh instances right now let's move to the next step the next step is now we are trying to find out another test to the left hand side now this time already we have astigmatism yes and we are trying to find another attribute value test to put in so that we will have an improved accuracy so what we do like in previous case, we will look at the remaining tests. So now you don't have to check on astigmatism. So that means that attribute is out. You have only three attributes left. That is age, spectacle, prescription, and tear production point. So each of these, again, you do the same. Now this time, you are going to find out when age is young, how many times you read the recommendation hard. Now this time, remember, when you look at the data set, when age is young, Right, and estimate is yes. How many times you have a heart? Right, so when you look at, you will get the accuracy of two divided by four. Right, and similarly, if you calculate the accuracies, you will get like this. Now, I have a small question from the audience. So what attribute test is the best to get the highest accuracy for this case? Yes. Which one do you think, which attribute value test is the best to get the highest accuracy? So when you go through these attribute values, you will see when you have a TO production rate is normal, you have a four divided by six, which is the highest accuracy. So the best one would be to put this in the row. Now this time we have an improved accuracy, isn't it? Now everybody, I hope you agree with me that our rule accuracy is about like 66%, right? 66%. So the rule is modified as if astigmatism is yes and deer production rate is normal. Now my rule recommends the heart, right? But what will happen is the remaining instance will be low because now astigmatism should be yes and the deer production should be normal, which indicates that we will have only six instances. So when you want to improve further, we can add another test. So now we have two tests. So under the two tests, right, we remaining, we have two attributes. That means we can select five tests like this. Okay, I will give you the answer for this one as well. So if you test the remaining two instances, this is the accuracy you are getting. Right. Now, my question is, now we are getting perfect accuracy, isn't it? 
we are getting two places we are getting per perfect accuracy. So which attribute value you are going to use? Is it a jump or is it spectral perceptive myon? Which one do you think we should select? Is it the first one or is it the fourth one? Exactly. So when you look at, actually you can use either first one or the fourth one. But the best thing would be the highest coverage. That means how many instances actually covered from this rule. So you will see that the first attribute value test cover only two instances, whereas fourth one cover four instances. Therefore, we should select the fourth one as you mean the the maximum coverage. Now, out of the 24 possible instances, now this decision rule, which covers only three. So the next step would be like you remove these three instances from your data set and you repeat the steps from the beginning again, right? You can do this by yourself. I think we should not spend the time. So we are going to do redo the again and then you will get another decision. So similarly, you do this by all the remaining classes and then you will get the complete decision tree list. Sorry, decision rule set. Right. So the final answer for this particular case is if astigmatism is just and tear production rate normal and spectacle prescription is myope, we will recommend the hard list. So similarly, if you do this for another time, once you remove the all the three covered ones, you will get another rule like this, right? So two rules can power over the hard lenses. Right. Now, I hope you got the idea of what is happening in this prism or covering algorithm. So this is the pseudocode. I will briefly go through it. So what it does is it will take one class at a time. And for each one class, you are going to assign, right? Empty left-hand side, which assigned to each of these classes. And what you do is for every iteration, you are trying to find attribute value condition, right? Which improves the accuracy of this rule set. And finally, you should add this to your knowledge base. This is called prism. And uh, we will see later on in Python how you can implement uh, this algorithm. But I think you understood how it works. Okay. Any questions? Any questions on that? Everybody is clear? Yes. Shall we move to the fifth one then? Sorry, fourth one. Right, shall we move to the next one then? Now we have discussed three basic machine learning algorithms and we discuss inner working of these algorithms. Now I'm going to select another attribute, sorry, another machine learning algorithm which uses instance themselves. So, this type of algorithms are known as instant-based representation. 
which means there's no model as such like in previous cases. Now remember in previous first algorithm 1R, we have a small model. Second one, decision tree, we have a decision tree. Third one, we have a rule set, we have a rule set. But instance based means there's no model as such. We are going to use our data set as the model. Right. So then the idea 